It's Christmas time. Wouldn't you know. Just wanted to show this fancy thing off. Remember these? I don't, because I wasn't born when these came out, but they remade them. Pretty cool. You could play Mario Brothers, Mario Brothers 2, or you could play the original 1980 whatever game. Pretty awesome. It's kind of cool you get to take it on the road. So, anyway, what's up, guys? It's a lot of uh, Christmas in the air. <laughs> it's a live video, so I just figured I'd uh, make a quick video and just show you guys what I got. <clears throat> well, not everything that I got. Some of this stuff is, uh, you know, this this is not mine. This turns out to be my uh, fiance's. I got it for her, actually. Um, this is kind of neat. It's not a slip joint, but we'll take a look at it anyway. She doesn't really... Well, she likes slip joints, but she really likes other stuff more. Look at this. Copper. Uh, pure copper handles. CPM 154 steel. Super stainless. Sci-fi. Space moon steel. Look at that. It's got fingerprints already. Where does it say CPM 154 at? Right here. Yeah. Yeah, right there. I thought it said China, but it says CPM 154. So, <laughs> what's up, Slip Joint Guy? What's up, JC? <clears throat> this thing's already having a color change because, you know, it's, it's copper, which is really cool. I might just, uh, I might just, my cat's already crying. I've been down here for like three minutes. She's crying. She's like spoiled to death. We got some of this here, Flitz. <clears throat> Man, I hope you guys aren't neglecting your families right now. Let's clean on video. Wonder what Flitz does to uh, copper. Yeah, if you guys are watching this instead of spending time with your family, you need to turn me off and go. Uh, Go do whatever people with families and stuff do on Christmas. Truth be told, I already celebrated my Christmas yesterday. Um, I don't know how this happened, but it turned kind of like into a family tradition of uh, us celebrating on Christmas Eve. I don't know why or how that happened. Look at that. It looks super nice. The problem with copper is that it tarnishes with, like, the presence of fingerprints. Very pretty, ain't it? My girlfriend loved this thing. She freaked out when she got it. She th she actually thought I stuck a, a different gift in a um, in a Kershaw box, and she was like, "This isn't really, you know, this isn't this isn't what you got me. Is it? Is this really it? Is this it?" You know, she was excited. Um, she's not a knife nut like the rest of us, but there's some things that she really likes. So, but this is cool, you know. The leaks are great, especially when. They're, you know, kind of like a special one like this. Copper, pure copper. This thing's heavy. Um, pure copper. Boom. She likes it. Liner lock. Very cool. I got this from Knife Ship Free. Um, this thing was like 90-something bucks. And I had to... Um, all those points you get when you buy stuff from Knife Ship Free, I cashed them all in. So, there's that. Flitz works really good. I noticed, like, if you don't want to scratch stuff, like, I'm afraid to scratch that, for example. I um, I noticed Flitz is kind of the go-to thing. It's a little less, um, it's a little less uh, harsh as, like, a wine all or case paste. Here's case paste, which I swear is just re repackaged wine all. This is wine all. I've had this since I was in middle school. So, which was over 20 years ago, FYI. Um, so, yeah, why not? And Flitz, Flitz is pretty good. I like that. So, what did I get for Christmas? Well, let's see. I've had this since 2019. Um, the Cadet. Alox. So, this year, I got the 2020. Whoa. The 20, I, my dexterity sucks because, you know, look at the scar, by the way. Um, I don't know if you guys can see it. It's right there where they cut me open. It's still swollen. It sucks, man. This is as far as I can bend it to. It's like, ah, uh, 
see where the other fingers can keep going. That's it. It sucks. But, so I have a little bit of dexterity issues. But anyway, this 2020 limited edition um, cadet, look at this. This thing is like electric blue. Well, it doesn't look like it in the video very much, but it's gorgeous. Love, love these cadets. There we go. Love these things. These are just one of the most, I don't know. I use this knife more than anything. Um, it, it has a can opener and a bottle opener and everything. You feel like a Boy Scout when you carry it. Uh, these things are just wonderful. The stainless steel are always easy to sharpen. They remind, it reminds me of Case True Stainless or True Sharp or whatever they call it. It's really good stuff. And the fit and finish is always good. I've not seen a single um, Victor Knox knife with bad fit and finish. Not yet, anyway. 2020. Pretty good. Let's see. Got your nail file. Just like everything on the other one. Nail file, lanyard loop. Lanyard loop, that's a key ring. But... Bottle opener. And that's a... That's a can opener with a flathead screwdriver, and then I think there's a bottle opener somewhere else. Yeah, bottle opener. Awesome knife. So I got that. Now, I, the funny part is I got this, and so did uh, my fiance. She got that, too. Um, my mother went down to Smoky Mountain Knife Works and picked them up at the same time. She bought both of us one because we both like them because they're both awesome knives. Um <laughs> So, there's that. I got something kind of neat. Uh, let's see. Austin, are you watching? Austin from uh, Traditional Pocket Knives. Or, yeah, TraditionalPocketKnives.com. Where's your sticker at? Right here. Uh, I got this. I got this from my mom. She ordered it. Uh, this is this is a pretty knife. You guys ready? You got five. I got five people watching. This is crazy. Five people. I'm a celebrity. Thanks for guys. Thank you guys for watching though. Guys, maybe a gal in there. I'm not sure. But check this beautiful thing out. You know what? Now might be the time to put on the gloves. So to keep the fingerprints down. These gloves are need to be replaced. They're starting to get stained by dirty knives and grease and oil. Check this guy out. I forget the name of this knife. Is it on the box? No, it's not. Um, don't know what it's called. But to me, it looks like a little Barlow. Looks like a skinny little bar. Ugh. Skinny little Barlow. Pretty cool. Um, so, yeah, she got this at uh, traditionalpocketknives.com. I sent a link to um, my fiance. I said... I would love to have this knife for uh, Christmas, you know, and she sent it to my mom. I haven't polished it yet. Look at that. You can see this thing's been sitting. Uh, apparently, this was made in 2008. So, this was before the uh, Daniels Family Cutlery. And this look at this. It's just beautiful bone. I love it. It has like a nice reddish brown tint to it. It's gorgeous. I mean, this thing is wonderful. Stainless steel, which I love. No half stops on this one. Uh, very snappy, though. Very snappy. Look at that. One of 600. Beautiful Shatton Morgan. Made in Titusville. Back in the old factory. Let me give you guys an update also, by the way. Um, I posted uh, that, that video about the, uh, old, sh the old Queen City knife I got on a Facebook forum. And um, this dude told me that it was made in the late 30s. Not between 22 and 33. Uh, he told me that it was made in the uh, late 30s after the acquisition of Shat Morgan because it used to be a Shat Morgan design. So let me correct that for you guys. If you guys um, have watched that video, it's uh, the 100 year old knife because I was assuming that it was made in 1922 to 1933. Kind of, it could be 100 years old. Well, apparently, according to him, it was made in the late 30s. So it's not 100 years old, not yet anyway, but it will be. Um, the funny part is, I got a book for Christmas, and that guy that I was talking to, I noticed is he's in this book. They referenced that guy. So he must know what he's talking about. Um, he's like a historian or something. He's a, he, he linked to Queen City, that one website, the queencityhistory.com. Uh, he linked to that. So uh, 
and they had him down as a historian as well. So I'm not going to argue with the historian. So that knife is not 100 years old, not yet. Got about another 10 years. So just uh, throw that in there. But look at this guy. This was made in 2008, and such a beautiful knife. This was before, I think, the, before Ken Daniels. You can see that brass is a little tarnished. A little bit tarnished, but hey, look at the centering. This is the way I love my Shad Morgans. You know, this one's a little centered to the right, but that's absolutely A-OK -okay with me because when you go to open this, you actually push this thing to the center to lift it. So in a way, when it's slightly off-centered like that, it kind of just prevents you from uh, pushing it too far to the you know, that side and scratching it. Um, and the other one's kind of the same way. Look at that. This one might be hard to open with gloves. Yeah, it is. It's a nice little uh, secondary blade. Beautiful knife. Absolutely beautiful. My cat is determined to come down here. She is up there like, she's just mad. She's mad because I just came home. I visited my dad today for uh, um, Christmas and because uh, my parents have been d divorced for years. So I get two Christmases. I'm one of them kids. So today I came back. I spent some time with the cat. Um, fiance is at her parents' house. And so I'm down here bored making videos. There we go. Look at that. 2008. I don't know what those numbers are, 42, 297. I don't really know what that means. Maybe it's a series or something. Not completely sure. Uh, wonderful video. Good job. Good job, Queen. Wish you guys were still in business. You know, Queen's coming back, though. Um, apparently somebody in Ohio purchased the name, and they're going to be making them in... When, where was it? It's not. Maybe it's Winchester, Ohio, something like that. So... They'll be coming back next year, supposedly. I hope so. Can't wait. I hope they're good. I just, I hate the fact that the factory is just sitting there chilling. I wish the factory was at least turned into something historical or making knives, something like that, because, you know, it seems like a waste. Such, I, I like history, you know, so it seems like it's a big waste when, uh, um, you know, something like that is just sitting. I got this book. Um, David A. Krause, basically it's a uh, historic book about Queen and Shad Morgan, which, you know, is my favorite knife uh, manufacturer, was, uh, since they're kind of not in business anymore. But it's a very nice book, lots of detail. This dude here, David Clark, is who I was talking to on uh, the uh, that Facebook group. That You can join that Facebook group. I think it's called um, uh, Vintage... Uh, vintage Shat and Morgan and Queen City Knives. If you type in Shat and Morgan on Facebook groups, you'll probably pop up with it. It has an old, the, I think the picture is like an old uh, Shat and Morgan building. I, in fact, I think that picture is actually in this book. But uh, this book's basically an awesome little history book. Um, I think it was made in 2001, so it might not be as update and current as... Um, this picture right here, that, that's the picture that they, that group has as a, like a header. So, um, but I noticed, um, that the group is great, but this book is awesome and I haven't read it yet cause I just got it, but I started to look through it and there's like all kinds of nice reference and history. Um, it's a wonderful gift. I love it. It's just something a Shat Morgan queen cutlery fan should have. And this thing is really high quality made too, because, uh, they, uh, this paper is super thick, and I just noticed, look at how the the binding is. You know, like, it's actually a quality book. Um, there's some nice pictures. There's no color pictures in between the covers, but there is some color at the end. Yeah, old picture. I think that's the picture they have right there. Um, yeah, they got some colored pictures in the back and in the beginning of the book as well. But, um sweet book i think you have to order this from the actual place that prints it i'll don't know what the link is i'll figure it out someday and i'll share that but or you can search for this on google and probably pull it up very cool book 
And I figured I'd bring that down to show you guys as well. So, but yeah, the knives we got this Christmas, this I didn't get. I just kind of brought that down. I used this knife though to open everything. You could tell, look at the plastic. It needs a, it needs a cleaning. So, but I love these. These cadets are great. Um, I heard a rumor that this year they won't be making a ALOX uh, yearly edition cadet. That they're going to be using um, the Hunter or something. And I think the only one is the Pioneer X or something. So they're changing it up. But I'm not exactly sure if that's true or not. Because um, you know how internet rumors are. So this thing's nice. Look at that. It's already tarnishing. I, wait, did I, I, don't, I don't think I cleaned that. I don't know if you guys want to watch me clean this thing, do you? Probably not. So, but hey, it's a nice little video. It's Christmas. I hope you guys had a great Christmas, you know? I did. I had a great Christmas. I had two Christmases. One yesterday, one today. So, it's always a great Christmas when you have two. I've been having two since I was like seven. What is this? Ew. More case paste or something on here. Let's put one bright up this, uh, this brass. See what this brass does. Yeah. Oh, there it is. It's not a vintage knife. I don't feel bad about cleaning up the the, uh, the old tarnished brass. Let's make this thing look new because it is new to me. It's new old stock is what it is. This thing's been sitting with Austin since 2008 when it was made. And he's been sitting on these things. It's about time for him to give them up, right? He don't need all these uh, Queen and Shat Morgan knives, though I think he's the only person in in the world that has any old stock now. Look at that cleaned up really nice. Shat Morgan was such a great company. Shat Morgan Queen, they're my favorite. Wonderful knives, wonderful knives. What else do we got? We got anything else? I don't really got anything else to show you guys. This is unique. This is pretty unique. She really liked that. It's always good to get something somebody really likes. You feel like you did a good job, you know? So, and that's going to get a lot of pocket time. Because these, to me, I mean, a lot of people collect them. But to me, I don't know. They're, they beg to be used because they're so useful. They're resourceful and useful or whatever. So, I use these things like wild. I should have brought down my Solo. They call it the Swiss Army 1 now, I think. But it used to be called the Solo. Um... That thing's used very much so. This guy's really small. It's like a tiny little skinny bar, though. I don't remember what it's called. Spear blade. Love it. Love it. Such a beautiful knife. What did you guys get for Christmas? You guys get any cool knives? Did you get any of those uh, GECs? What do they call them things? Um, the little rattlers. You guys get any of those or the vipers? I, I The little rattler does not appeal to me at all. I don't know what it is. I just seen that knife and I just did not like it. So I did not buy one. The Vipers, kind of the same way. I'm not really that big into them, to be completely honest. So Executive Jack, somebody got one, huh? In Stag. Is that a, uh, is an Executive Jack, is that is that a queen? Like a queen number 99, I think? Or I don't know. There, there could be all kinds of different companies. They name them whatever they want to name them. But Executive Jack, I'm pretty sure... Uh, was a 99 pattern, which was really nice. They actually made the, um, what is the company called? Uh, yeah, Shad Morgan. Okay. So, yeah, it's a 99 uh, Executive Jack. And the, uh, what was the, um, I have one. I don't think they call it the Executive Jack, though. Um, just looks like yours, but burnt stag. Um the 99 the 99 pattern uh queen chat morgan knives are uh the same knives that knife ship free used um for their indian river jacks to begin with and uh yeah there was like a single blade spear blade they use cpm 154 steel no actually did they use cpm yeah i think they did uh this year, I'm going to be super honest with you. Did you see the, the Indian River Jacks that came out this year? Disappointment, in my opinion. I mean, don't get mad. Look how dirty these gloves are. Um, 
don't get upset if you disagree. It's okay to disagree. But what I'm saying, compared to the uh, Indian River Jacks of, you know, a few years ago, I think 2015 and back, those had CPM 154 steel, which justifies the cost, in my opinion, instead of 1095. Because I know you guys, like, steal that rusts. I get it. You know, it, it's great steel. 1095, 1095 is not a bad steel. But when you're paying a lot of money... 1095 is actually a cheap steal, so it doesn't really justify the cost except for the you know the fact that people will pay it. But um, what was I saying? Like my cat's crying. <laughs> uh, basically, the the older ones, the 2015s, they were made by GEC. They were also made by uh, Queen, and uh, when Queen made them, I know they were 154 steel, and they were on the 99 pattern. And this year, they were on the 35 pattern and made by uh, GEC. Still a nice knife, but I always wanted a pure white bone CPM 154 Indian River Jack. Always wanted one. I always thought it'd be cool because um, you could use it. Don't have to worry about it rusting and everything. But good luck finding one of them. You know what else is a really cool knife that I wish I got? Uh... And I, and I didn't even know GEC existed. I didn't know they exist when these came out. And that was the um, uh, the Washington Jacks. Now, I wish a GEC would come out with those again because I'd buy one in every handle color. Um, the Washington Jacks are beautiful. I just love those knives. They're copied off of... They're basically an English Jack, and they're copied really closely to the old timers. That charade made in the 50s that was kind of expensive so um would love to have one of those but i am i have a rule and that rule is i don't spend over 150 dollars for a knife because i don't know there's just some there's certain things that i just do not do and spending over 150 dollars for a knife is one of them i just do not see it let's see if we can get some of this tarnish off here you guys want to get if you're real bored you can watch me clean this knife how's that so this might be a pain in the butt you know a lot of people who would buy something like this would actually really love the fact that this thing patinas and tarnishes and i bought this for somebody who would absolutely hate it so i have a feeling i'm going to be the one cleaning this darn thing all the time which, to be completely honest, I don't want to do. But it is a gorgeous knife. I don't know if y'all can hear that, but my cat is upset. She probably thinks I'm talking to my fiancé down here, and she's like, I want to be with you guys because she's a... What kind of cat is she? She's a mixed cat, but she has, a, I think, Russian blue in her. She's very gray, green eyes, and... Uh, She's needy. She always wants to be around you. She can't not be out of the room that you are in. And if you're talking, that means there's people there. And if people are there, she wants to be there. So that's a gorgeous knife. That is a gorgeous knife, in fact. Very cool. Really good for somebody who can't use their other hand, too. I mean, she can, but for a moment there, I couldn't. So I was using her leaks. She She loves leaks and, you know. I do too. Let me put this lid back on. Flitz is good stuff. I actually bought those flitz for um motorcycle. Uh they say it's really good for chrome on bikes. So I bought it with a wheel or with a ball. It was like a little buffing ball. Stick that on a drill, put this stuff on your uh wheels of the motorcycle, the chrome wheels and the spokes, and go to town with that little ball on a drill and polish them up really good. Flitz, pretty good stuff. So, oh, I forgot to mention my mama, my mama, she loved her uh, gift. And I seen that you guys posted a lot of comments saying, you know, she'll love it. She'll love it. She did love it. She liked it a lot. Um, this isn't it. But if you watch the video, this was in the video, which happens to be laying down here from the last time I made the video. Uh, yeah, she liked it. She really liked it. And I'm glad she liked it. I pointed out all the flaws, you know, and she, of course, she, eh, that don't matter, you know, whatever matters to me uh some of you guys asked about you know like hey would i be willing to make a knife for you like no dude i barely made that knife for my mom 
So if I barely made it for my mom, I'm probably not going to make one for you guys. And not, not because I don't want to. I would love to. The problem is, is my grinder is a piece of crap. And I'm surprised I managed to make that without it completely failing. Um, someday, whenever I get a decent grinder, and like I said, they're expensive, I'd probably make some knives and sell them. That'd be cool. It'd be kind of fun. Make some side money. Um, but right now, I just don't have the means to do it. So this was made... This knife here was made when my uh, knife grinder, well, my, my belt grinder was actually fairly new. Um, let's see. It's a 1 by 42 I bought it at a yard sale. I paid like $50 for it. And slowly the thing just started falling apart. Not instantly. This was like after about a year's worth of knife making. I got about like maybe eight knives out of it. And I started making knives, and the first one was really janky looking. If you watch the other video I made, you will see that video. That the first one looks like a really goofy steak knife. But um, the uh, I started making them. They're coming out really nice. And uh, this dude, I brought one to work, and this dude wanted to buy it. Um, so I made him one. And, uh, you know, I made him one. And then after I made him one, he went around and showed everybody at work. And then, you know, before long, I had a book of people wanting knives. Now, here's a rule for all you guys knife makers out there. Don't don't make yourself, don't make that your job because you will get burnt out quick. And it, that actually happened to me. I started making knives like this guy wanted one, this guy wanted one, this guy wanted one, which was cool. But I still was new at making them. I mean, this was one of the last ones and it still has flaws. Look at the bolsters on this thing. They're cattywampus as hell you know so uh i tried and everybody was happy with them um but it was kind of stressful and it really ruined it really ruined the fun of it you know took the fun out of it then my i wanted to make one for my mom so as i started to make the last one and the following one would be the, for my mom the grinder started t tearing itself apart like the bearing wanted to come out the screws were all screwed up and um, then the backing wouldn't stay flush and even, and it was a nightmare. So um, I finished that one dude's, I sold it to him, and I'm like, you got the last one. I tried to make my mom's. It didn't work. Waited a year, you know, because you get super frustrated with stuff like that. You don't even want to mess with it. But I waited a year, came back to it, finished it. It's not perfect, but it's the best I could do with that grinder I have. So someday when I get the money, uh, I'll, uh, you know, make a uh make some more knives and when that happens i'll guess i'll you'll know about it because i make videos right so yeah anything else we're going to talk about today probably not you know i think we're going on for almost 30 minutes it's probably the longest video i've ever made somebody got a case cheetah caucasian asian got case cheetah for christmas a caucasian asian that's a that's a good name i like that um Case Cheetah. Case Cheetah's a good I when I sold when I sold those um Case Cheetahs from uh uh when I was, you know, on slipjointguy.com when I was selling knives, I could always buy like three or four of those and they would always sell. They're very popular. Um always popular knives, especially with C V steel. I was selling the C V steel ones with the um chestnut bone. I sold a lot of them and the fit and finish on those were always good. You know, because that's the thing about case knives. Some of them they don't care about. Like the sod busters. Like some guy just asked me through Messenger, I think it was. He asked me, like, what do you, you know, what about sod busters? And I said, dude, the sod busters are... I have not bought a sod buster that was like... Okay, okay, I take that back. I've had a few sod busters that were nice. The ones with the bone handles. The ones that cost a little bit more money. Those are okay. But every single plastic sod buster I bought from case was pretty janky. Um... But the Case Cheetahs, those are hands down one of the highest quality case knives you could buy. And usually I have not had any problem. I had somebody complained about the um, the guards wiggling on them. And, uh, you know, that's kind of like, it's sort of picky. It's, it's, uh, it's sort of picky, but I can get it. And when you spend $75, $80 for a knife, you know, you kind of want the best you can get. This one, I think, is like $75 on traditional pocket knives website right now. Austin. 
Are you watching? Are you live, Austin? Are you watching secretly? Don't know it. <laughs> Austin's a cool guy. He probably didn't even know he sold this to my mom. He, he doesn't know, you know. And um, he probably sold this to my mom. And look how nice it is. This is RAM. This kind of stuff. Like, there's no favors. You get good stuff from Austin. That's why I like dealing with him. Plus, he's an Ohio guy. He lives up, I don't know, probably about an hour north of me. I've never met him. But um, he's a good guy, you know. Real good dude. He's a veteran. So, I mean, you can support his company feeling good that, you know, you're supporting a veteran. A private. His grandpa started the business. He took it over. Um, honest guy. Super nice. Sells good stuff. And I know he's going to sell the new Shad Morgans when those come out. Hopefully soon. I can't wait. I wish I could sell knives again. It's just there's not a lot of profit in it. Um, it's a lot of headache. And if you're doing a real serious job it kind of just starts to become a hassle. And, uh, you know, people say don't make your hobby your job. That's kind of true. Um, this stuff gets annoying, especially when you have, like, returns and stuff. And some knives, I barely make such a profit that if, a ret if, I'm ret if I have to issue a return and I paid shipping to and from uh, when somebody returned it, I lost money. You know, like I would break even selling it again. And if they returned it, I lost money. So, I mean, that tells you how much profit is in and a lot of knives. The higher end stuff, there's a little bit more profit. But the lower end stuff, it's about volume. You have to sell a lot of it uh, to, you know, make it worth it. So, I'd like to do it someday. I mean, if I won the lottery, I'd open a knife store. Why not? I'd hire people to do my job, you know. But... I don't have the means to do that, so at the time, I'm just going to keep on making videos, because I can enjoy making videos and enjoy the hobby and and all that, um, and share that with you guys, and you know, not have to be aggravated by the sales and stuff. This is wild, though. If anybody was asking about that, you see that scar? So focusing, yeah. So like the scar here. They cut it like a zigzag, and it ends over here. I've been going to therapy every week, and uh, that's it. And they were like, some people can't move their fingers past that. And I'm thinking, man, I'm paying thousands of dollars for, like, that. <laughs> that's not. I'm kind of disappointed, to be honest. But it is what it is. I guess it's better to have some sort of use. I can pick stuff up now. I can open knives. I can, you know, use it. It's still swollen. I usually have to wrap it in that 3M Coban stuff. Um, yeah, it's still swollen. It's hard as a rock, too, because of this, uh, they call it a scar tissue under here. Hard as a rock. I hope I hope all this heals up over time. They told me it'll take about a year for it to uh, kind of get somewhat back to normal. But... I don't know. We'll see. What's this? This is random, ain't it? Um, this guy right here is a Camillus knife. And it was made in the 1940s. I believe it was made in 1943 and older. 43 and back. Um, I think they call this a utility knife or something. I can't remember. But apparently this was issued in World War II. Bone handles and all. I don't know if this will focus on the tang. Camillus, Camillus. So, this thing's great. Now, this is the this is the kind of patina that uh, is okay. There is no rust. This is straight patina from use. Uh, the, that that Queen City knife I got, it was just rust. It had to be dealt with. Um, but this is a knife. Apparently, they gave soldiers to some soldiers. In World War II, and how I came upon this is I bought a house and I opened up a shoebox that was left over in the house. It was in the garage, and uh, inside that shoebox there was this knife, and I was like, "Wow, this is a can opener!" And I have no idea how you use it. Um, I have no idea. It's I would figure it out probably if I had a can laying around, but uh, apparently this is a old design can opener and that is a, also how you tell this was made before 19 like 44 i think i looked it up once it has a all there we go 
as an awl, which looks like it's been used. I'm pretty sure the guy who lived here before me uh, was in World War II, so this was probably issued to him. Um, the guy that lived here before me uh, passed away before I obviously got the house, but the dude's wife still lived here, and uh, I bought it from her son, and they left a bunch of things here, which I was like, cool with. I was like, go ahead and leave it, you know. Um, I'll clean it out, which I did. And like I said, I found this, which is a gem for somebody like me. The uh, main blade don't have any snap. I don't know if it's lost it over time. You can see it's kind of beat up. Really cool. It's got the uh, lanyard loop or bail. Now, this is a true piece of history. It doesn't need to be restored. I cleaned it with some uh, gun oil, G96 gun oil. And that's kind of as far as I'm going to go with it because it's it's pretty good. It's not rusting away like that queen knife was. No more knives. Do I have any more knives? Do I have anything else to show you guys? Should I put it into this video or keep going? I got seven people watching. Let's see. For the K-bars that they are deployed. Oh, K-bars. Why do I think they chose stacked leather handles? Boy, I don't know. I was thinking probably because of grip. I don't know any other reason. Probably because it's easy, cheap, and it has a lot of grip. Where, like, bone can be slick if this is wet. If a leather handle is wet, I would imagine you still have grip to it. Um, K-Bar is a great fighting knife, but if you ever used it, like, for bushcraft, you'll break it. I actually have a K-Bar. It's really cool. Like, I actually have a few long knives. I ought to show them sometime. Um, that's probably why they issued it. Probably because of the grip and durability. I have seen K-Bars that have been used a lot, and, um, since they were used a lot, they, they've actually, like, lost the, um, the leather... They're like a washer, I guess. They're like leather, stacked leather washers. I've seen them actually missing some. Uh, my mother, uh, her, I guess you could say her husband, they're married. Um, she has, well, he's not my dad, but you know. Um, he has a Western knife that was made during the war. It's blued like a gun. And... Uh, Apparently, it was a order for the Army, and apparently, it's super rare. It's a Western knife made during, like, 1940-whatever for the Army. And uh, the story is he took it to Smoky Mountain Knife Works to have it appraised. They took the knife, came back with it, and said, my manager likes to talk to you. So he went with this guy, talked to the manager, and the manager said, are you looking to sell this knife? And he said, no, I was looking to have it appraised. And then he said, oh, well, if you're willing to sell it, I'll offer you $200 for it. And then, of course, you know, he declined, and they talked about it. He said how it was rare, and that's how he found out about the knife. Um, I have no idea what it's worth now. You know how things go. Things get, they go up and down value, uh, depending on collectability. But uh, apparently that knife is rare enough that some dude at Smoky Mountain Knife Works wanted to pay $200 for it. So it must have some sort of historical historical significance. So, oh man, what's going on down here? Man, tomorrow's Saturday. Tomorrow's Saturday. It feels like a Sunday to me. So, I think that's about it, guys. I think I might call an end to this video. Oh man, this is such a pretty knife. I can't get it. Out of all these knives that I got for Christmas, this is definitely my favorite knife. Definitely my favorite knife. I didn't get this for Christmas or this. So, all right, fellas. We're going to take an end to this. We're almost at 40 minutes. So, hey, I don't know if this video, this is the first live video, so I don't know if it's going to, like, save or, like, re-upload or whatever. So, I don't even know how to turn this thing off yet. So, I'll figure it out. <laughs> oh, man. So, let's see. Share, enable, cancel, mute microphone. No, I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. All right, guys. I'm going to say have a good night. Merry Christmas. Hope you have a happy new year. Um, be safe traveling. Last night I was coming home. Um, I live in Cincinnati. Uh was going on 75 South, and it was shut down. Turned out that some dude broke down, got out of his car, and some other dude hit him and killed him. So they shut down the whole highway. Um, and just like Cincinnati fashion... The dude uh, drove off and didn't even stop, so like a, you know, asshole. 
as how Cincinnati is. It's, it's like it's like small town vibe with uh, the homicide rate of you know like a big city. It's a, I hate this place, but um, so be careful out there, guys. Um, it's the holidays. It's good times. Some people get drunk. They get on the roads. You know, be safe. Be careful. Be alert. Uh, carry a knife. Um, and uh, you know, it's the holidays, so you know. Spend time with your loved ones, appreciate them, because you never know when they're going to be gone. Like my aunt, she ended up passing away uh, right after th uh, Thanksgiving. So you never you never know how much you miss people until they're gone. So it's Christmas time. Appreciate the people that you're, you you have, you know. So with that being said, I guess I'll end this video. I'm going to hit this little square at the top here and see if this ends it. If it does, I'll see you guys next video. All right.